live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering DevNet Create 2017. Brought to you by Cisco. And welcome back to theCUBE, I'm Peter Burris, and this is the last of two days of great presentations here at Cisco, DevNet Create a show set up specifically to help software developers and networking professionals start to co-mingle their ideas and look at business problems differently to create new ideas, new innovations, new inventions that can change the way the world does things so that we can improve the quality of digital business and life overall. And I'm very excited that uh, our last session we actually have a real live software engineer okay. <laughs> here on theCUBE to talk about some of the things that are happening. And it's a very important one because it's an app dynamics. Ballwinder Kerr, nice to uh, meet you and welcome to theCUBE. Nice to be here, thanks Peter. So Ballwinder is a principal software engineer at App Dynamics, which is a Cisco property that came in uh, within the last year. Yes. Uh, and has been especially important in thinking about how we're going to embed additional software controls and metrics into applications to make them more network friendly. Absolutely. All right, so let's start off by asking you this question, Bowender. You're a software engineer, you're mm -hmm. a developer, you're at this show, first inaugural show that Cisco's put forward, what do you think of it? I think it's very interesting that uh, Cisco is doing something for uh, DevOps, for the cloud, for uh, IoT, that is not completely network focused, so it's great. Well, most of the content, as Cisco said, is coming out of the community, it's coming out of contributors and, and others that are part of this process. Mm -hmm. Has there been any particular theme or message that you've seen from the community as it's kind of come together that uh, surprised you or really resonated with you? Uh, well, I definitely, since we are very new to the Cisco family, I got a chance to meet with other uh, companies and other parts of Cisco here, and I uh, got a better picture of how different pieces like Jasper and Meraki and AppDynamics together can provide uh, wonderful insights for the customer base, and uh, that's very valuable, whether it's uh, insights into the networking layer, application layers, again, within the applications, whether they're web applications, java.net, or they're Android, iOS, and embedded applications, the Internet of Thing applications, whether they're multiple applications on one um, a box, or dedicated applications, so I think, I think it's very exciting and the potential is just immense. AppDynamics has been at the vanguard of thinking about this notion of networkability of applications for quite some time. As AppDynamics has evolved and matured and you almost had an exit that went to the public and you ended up with an exit that went to Cisco, how has the audience, the community around application development responded to AppDynamics' vision of the idea of better instrumenting applications to make them more successful on networks and have networks be more appropriate for application developers? So, uh, your question was quite complicated. True. <laughs> but hey, you got five minutes. <laughs> I will try to answer it. Um, so I definitely the response uh, that uh, with AppDynamics being part of uh, Cisco has been positive from the customers because um, now there's a lot of backing from a very big uh, company and uh, uh, definitely there are synergies. Um, Cisco is big in the enterprise, AppDynamics is also big in the enterprise and as applications uh, become more and more of the business, um, uh, definitely the customers like that part and um, I don't know how closely you've been following what AppDynamics does but um, uh, we've gone from just application monitoring into uh, business IQ, uh, different parts of your business and providing more and more intelligence to our customers. So I think it's a good place and a good time to be. So as we like to say that digital business is really how you use your data. The difference between di business and digital business is the idea that data is an asset and can be applied differentially mm -hmm. to create serve customers. Mm -hmm. and the uh, in the the trend to add new digital capabilities to business means that software and data are getting embedded deeper and deeper and deeper into business pieces, uh, both as process as for analytics and a number of other things. 
And it sounds as though App Dynamics, at least for that core set of enterprise customers, are also being embedded more deeply in the business as software takes on more responsibility for the core and differentiating capabilities that a business performs. Is that accurate? Uh, that's definitely one way of putting it. Uh, we like to uh, say at App Dynamics that the application is becoming the business. So we have application focused and we more and more businesses are moving into the applications space and so IT organizations are not uh, a support function but getting to be more of the core function. So yes, it's uh, two ways of representing probably what is very close. So as you move from monitoring to monitoring and analytics for crucial software applications, what new approaches or what new insights is your customer base gaining about how best to set up these uh, capture points and how to use the data associated with application performance? So there's different parts of the application, right? And application architectures are changing, so you need to have solutions that can um, that can uh, cater to all of them. For example, microservices is a big trend now, uh, containers like Docker, and so you need your monitoring solutions to be able to uh, cater to all of that. The other piece is uh, the depth of instrumentation, so not just in the application layer, your database, your network monitoring, so the complete suite of all of these, and then not isolated, right? Being able to correlate all the data, and that's, sort of within the data center, but at the outside, what we call the end user monitoring. Uh, we have browser and Android and iOS, but we are also building solutions now for the Internet of Things, which is basically traditional connected embedded devices, but now they're talking to cloud services. And so uh, definitely a lot of these, uh, these things are now very developer centric. So just like Cisco has this conference geared towards developers, um, yes, we definitely understand that uh, embedded systems, they need more and more um, developer-centric uh, features where they have control of what performance data to pick up, what uh, business data to pick up, when to send the data. And so yeah, just having the wide, rich variety um, of support for different platforms, different form factors, and different languages also, right? And then being able to all view it in a single pane, I think that's the strength of App Dynamics. But you also need more developers, because there's going to have to be an enormous amount of software to bring all these devices, these yes. IoT events, mm -hmm. and everything else that we're talking about when we think about digital business, in under the umbrella of an App Dynamics or related type of technology. So bringing new developers in and having them be familiar with the value that these kinds of tools can bring to the party is crucial. How is App Dynamics looking at the challenges of attracting whole new classes of gener uh, whole new classes of application developers into the fold, so that you can in fact have greater end-to-end -end visibility about how applications are performing and behaving? So uh, we have uh, dedicated uh, teams now, which are looking at uh, increasing uh, developer mind share and catering to them. Um, also, there's like, especially in this whole internet of things, uh, that's a very well understood uh, factor in the industry that you don't have as many embedded uh, engineers to build all the applications, and that's why there is, all the platforms are now coming with more support for um, you know, JavaScript mm -hmm. developers, Java, which nobody used to think would run you know, heavily on embedded devices. It's a big player, Python, JavaScript, and so I think catering, using embedded engineers to build tools so that the web application developers can write applications that run on embedded uh, devices is the trend, and we recognize it and absolutely support all those developers. So time is crucial, at yeah. the, especially at the edge, where you have to be able to, uh, often an event has to happen within a certain prescribed period of time, mm -hmm. and the, uh, the, the round trip mm -hmm. can be challenging. So what is the role that monitoring and metering, well not so much metering, but monitoring and event management plays as we start to deploy these more complex applications, especially IoT-like applications? So um, the, um, I just finished the talk here recently and basically uh, 
at design time, just you know how they say that security has to be built in at design time. Similarly, all solutions that get deployed now need to be built in with hooks for performance monitoring, right? If your devices are now talking to the cloud, you need to be able to know that when your hundreds and thousands of devices are there, which one of them are suffering from a network latency problem and which ones are not. And that is where AppDynamics comes in. You put the agents there, they correlate back, and they correlate to all different parts of your businesses, whether the traffic is originating from a mobile device, a browser, or it's originating from an embedded device. And um, I think that's, that's performance monitoring is absolutely crucial. It's not a luxury to have anymore. It is a must have. And I think as more and more solutions get deployed into the field, um, the realization will be there. I think right now people are still in the IoT world, still focused more on other problems like security, interoperability, connectivity, but this will become a growing pain once some of the other hurdles have been bypassed. Well, what, what are some of those lessons that you learn about how you appropriately embed performance management and monitoring hooks into applications? Where should people be looking? Uh, so if you're looking at uh, the embedded side, then uh, people should look at definitely small footprints. Uh, it should be, the agents should be configurable. You don't want, because different devices and use cases have different expectations. Uh, some of the devices, they only want the performance data to be, mon to be sent when uh, they are done with whatever they are designed to do. Others don't want the battery to be up, so they want the performance data to be sent when, the bat when they are powered up, not in deep sleep mode. Then again, offline mode also varies from application to application. Um, there are some devices that go offline for up to weeks and they just want to store local data and upload it later on. There are others that cannot store more than one hour. So basically you're looking for agents that are configurable, the developer can control when they want to send data, when do they want to store data, how much they want to store data. Then at the back end, you should be able to correlate all this because in isolation, it doesn't give you the problem. There is a lot of complexity on the uh, end user side as well as there's a lot of complexity on the um, web application side, right? There are microservices, Docker containers. So any solution that provides end-to-end -end monitoring and then is able to correlate data across different pieces to be able to give a true picture of performance is a good solution to have. So we want to make sure that the agent isn't forcing particular behaviors, but is in fact responsive and fits within the environmental constraints and considerations of whatever it is that that local device does. Mm -hmm. Yes, so you're looking for a lot of flexibility on the embedded side. There are other where auto instrumentation and ease of use and not necessarily developer um, uh, development time is important. There are other factors there, but for the uh, Internet of Things side, this is what is important. So as we think about increasing, as we think about the evolution over the next few years of software, uh, to what degree does the ability to reuse software get tied back to uh, having visibility into how software performs? Being able to move from one cloud supplier to another, have depend upon having greater visibility in how software performs. Uh, the ability to reapply software to new roles or purposes that weren't originally anticipated f depended upon knowing how that software performs. It seems as though an app, dy app dynamics tool is going to have a much greater uh, set of propositions over the course of software as opposed to just at design time. Would you agree with that? Yes, absolutely, right? Because as, um, so multi-cloud is definitely one. You want to be able to see your performance data, how your business is performing, right? Because your business is your application, how is it performing as, you know, solutions move across different clouds or performance of the different clouds change. So uh, we, there are already conversations about like multi-cloud, um, for sure, and then yes, absolutely, developers getting real-time feedback um, of you know their new deployments. Uh, how is how is it? Uh, how did it impact the performance or not? Yes, those are going to be very important trends. So as the we've been talked a lot over the past few days about DevOps and the role that DevOps is likely to play in digital business as well as within uh, the way the industry is evolving. Can you just relate? the role that App Dynamics and again, this class of tools has 
to facilitating collaboration and communication and working relationships between operations and development people? Um, so, <clears throat> we already, um, internally, we have uh, uh, applications because we are a SaaS uh, solution too, and so we are very acutely aware of, uh, we have to keep our systems up as well, and we are uh, acutely aware of how, when we develop and deploy new uh, solutions, um, what does it mean, how the performance can, be monitored, and uh, that's a trend that uh, definitely we are keeping an eye on, but uh, is there something to uh, suggest that we have tools right now? I don't think uh, there is something that we but can talk. But can the data be used by both parties? Uh, so is the data, is performance data, application performance data, it, can it be a lingua franca for both operations and developers absolutely. as they think about making sure that absolutely. This, you know operations people saying this is what works, and application developers saying this is what I need, that data can kind of start bringing them together and giving them a common thing oh, to talk absolutely, about. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, right? Well, so one last question here. Uh, this is the first, the inaugural, uh, Cisco DevNet Create. What do you think? You looking forward to futures, uh, future uh, DevNet Creates? Absolutely. And what do you? What would you like to see coming out of this show uh, as, as a consumer of the information, not as a presenter, but what would you like to see more of uh, as these communities start to co-mingle and, and, and cross-pollinate ideas? Um, I think uh, some of the things that uh, that is is a friction and will stay a friction till uh, the uh, embedded and operations teams become come closer with the IT teams and so I think best practices from both sides uh, being able to <clears throat> know what best practices are and then you know brainstorming and coming up with things that work for everybody is one. Um, and maybe people put people in each other's shoes, right? Like um, IT uh, ops doesn't always understand everything about what happens on the OT side and vice versa. So you know, even like putting them in a situation where they get better hands-on, like a lab, right? Where they have better hands-on experience and. Um, now I understand what they're dealing with, right? Like uh, the people who've never been inside a knock and they now can sit there and you know, experience some of this. Which is not the most fun thing in the world to do. Yeah, I so mean. then we need to make it more fun, right? <laughs> yes, a knock as <laughs> World of Warcraft. <laughs> All right, so Bowinder Kerr, thank you very much. Thanks, Bowinder Peter. Kerr is the principal software engineer or a principal software engineer at AppDynamics. And, and this is it, guys two days of Cisco DevNet Create. It's been a very successful conference. We've talked about some uh, fascinating things, a lot of sessions on talking about DevOps, a lot of sessions on uh, multi-cloud and the role that software is going to play inside business as digital business transform. Uh, this has been theCUBE, more of this in upcoming shows. Thank you very much for watching us over the course of the past couple days. For John Furrier, Peter Burris, thanks for watching. Hi, I'm April Mitchell and I'm the Senior Director of Strategy